if you put the whole throttle and you release the clutch, what will happen? Well, hello folks and welcome to our last Tech Talk demo of 2023 with the Science teacher, everybody wishes they had at school, Mr. Albert Fabrega. Hi, Will. How are you? I'm great, mate. Yeah. I'm great. Well, I'm exhausted. It's yes, been a long year, but we have one more of these. Yes, we're not going to talk about exhaust. No. No. We are talking about clutches. Yeah, that's it. That is a switch. It is a switch. A simple switch. A simple switch. That it, a switch, uh, electric switch, it moves the electricity and the power from one side to the other. A potentiometer like the radio is increasing or decreasing the level of volume. Don't, a clutch. It's not a simply on off. On off, exactly. You it's can more volume, less volume. So this is the thing that the clutch is doing in a road car, but also in a Formula One. So this is it. The the similarities between roads and Formula One, uh, they're clear. A lot of similarities. This is a road car clutch. Is it your road car clutch? Because it looks absolutely <laughs> knackered. It's knackered. It's, it's completely broken. <laughs> yes, it's completely burned. But we have to say that. Is the, the function is very is in is very easy. It's very simple. We have the power and the reps coming and the torque coming from an engine, and we want to move that all to the gearbox, the differential, and to the wheels. But we need something, some switch. We need sometimes not to have all the power or have all the reps. So we have in the middle something like a clutch disc, a disc like that, that is between the engine with the pressure plate and the gearbox through this axle that is going here. So when we press the pedal, we open this and there is no movement. So the engine starts running alone. There's no movement to the wheels, but when we release the clutch pedal, this goes a solid. And we have all the movement going to the wheels. But between that, we can have just half clutch to start move the car, because if you put the whole throttle and you release the clutch, what will happen? Stop. Stop. Or you start to spin the wheels that you like. I know you like that. I love that. I know you like that. I love that. So between this, we need to make something that is uh, allowing us to move the car as quick as possible. And then we need just this to start releasing slowly the movement to the wheels. Okay. Okay. In Formula One, we're obviously not dealing with something this big. No. Uh, this is heavy. This is more or less five kilos. We don't want on the car. We don't that big on the car because this is coming from the crankshaft, from the engine. So we. We want the uh, position of the clutch and the gearbox as low as possible. So we end up with something a little bit more expensive. A little bit say. more refined. Yes. And this is the entire clutch assembly. Yes, this is the whole thing. So what are we dealing with here? As we can see, we have, a, uh, you see, we have an axle. We have the, this is going to the engine. So we have the rotation of the engine and something that is going out the exit the output going to the uh, gearbox and the differential. So it's more or less like we explained. And in the middle, we have discs. I don't know if you can see the discs inside. Yep. So the same concept, a little bit different, and an hydraulic piston that is moving and doing this movement of releasing or engaging the clutch. So that's opening and closing. Yes. So it is an hydraulic thing. Why is it an hydraulic thing? Can we put a cable? A uh, cable, it makes it elastic, it couldn't be exactly the movement, the pressure and the speed that we need on this. It could be a bar, not also, it could be air, no, it's hydraulic. Hydraulic is very, very easy. We have a piston in one side and something that is giving pressure on the other with the liquid. And whenever we're putting pressure in one side, it's moving the thing on the other one and the reverse. So that makes it very simple, very, that you can compress, that's direct, is quick and uh, safe. So. Hydraulic, because if we do it with air, you want to try it with air? No, we've done this before. <laughs> we've done this before when we were doing the, the bleed and the brakes. Yeah. So the thing is that if, if we do have air instead of uh, liquid, you see, if I'm putting the pressure and holding here, look. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all going. Yeah, no. It's not moving. So with an hydraulic system, we can have this much better. And many uh, hydraulic systems on the car, not only the clutch. So it's multiple plates yes. we're dealing with here. Road car, clutch disc, and Formula One. This, as you see, there is outer plates and inner discs. So the movement from the engine is engaging these outer discs, and to the gearbox, we're engaging inside on the disc. Wow. So when it's open, there is no friction, there's free movement of the engine, and it's not going to the gearbox. When we start putting pressure on it, we compress this, there start being friction between the discs and the plates, and we start moving 
the car because we are sending the movement, the part, the torque from the engine through here to the gearbox to the disc. So everything is compressing. But what we're dealing with in Formula One is not like a normal manual road car. In a manual road car, you dip the clutch, change gear, dip the clutch, change gear each yeah. time. Off the throttle, clutch, change. Yeah. Formula One, the input comes from the paddle shift. Paddle shift. You're not engaged. So just to show everybody, on the back of a Formula One steering wheel, you have your gear shift levers here, yep. up and down. Yep. That's up it. on the right, down on the left. Yes. And here, these are your clutch levers. Exactly. But Formula One drivers aren't engaging the clutch to shift down. Exactly. Or to shift up. Exactly. You're, it's a semi-automatic. Yep. You, you press the pedal. Imagine you press the pedal, the clutch pedal up to the end. Pedal to the metal. It's like if you press that paddle. But you only utilize that for race start. For race start, yes. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about race start first of all, because that's when the clutch is in operation. And then let's talk yes. about gear shift in race. Exactly. As, as in, a, in a road car, we said, if you put all the pedal to the metal on the throttle and you release it instantly, the clutch, you, you will have two, two, two things. Or you will start spinning the tires that we don't want because you're overheating the tire and you lose a lot of uh, power there. Or you will stall the engine, block. So, we engage the clutch fully. Yes. We lift the revs and you start to release the clutch until you find... Up to a certain position. It must be a quick release, but up to a half, approximately 40%, 50%. So we find the bite point. Bite point, that's the key. Bite point is the position where the discs and the plates start having friction. So they start moving, start moving or putting the revs and the power from the engine to the wheels and the car start moving forward. And that's where in your road car, when you have your clutch engaged, you start to release with some throttle, you feel the car drop down. Yes. It's about to go. And start moving. And start moving so there is no spin, we are not losing power. And then after that, yeah, it's depending on the driver. Gradual then release. You put the flat, the, the pedal flat, and then you release the whole thing. And then you can release the whole thing. Yes, because there is no much spinning, so you don't lose a lot of time because the tires are spinning and you move the car as forward as possible. Already with 100% of the reps from the engine, of the torque of the engine, already going to the wheels. Very quickly, I'm not sure these guys know any other songs. I think it's <laughs> no. just this one. <laughs> okay, but there is a system that we have to say, Will, that is very important. If you release the whole clutch and you don't have the whole power on the throttle, before it stalls, there is a system that is anti-stall. Electronically, what, what it does, it, no, we don't want to stall the engine, we don't want to stop the car in the grid. So the electronics makes the clutch to release completely, to open the clutch again, so we don't release, uh, we don't stop the car. It's like a panic uh, mode. Yeah, exactly. So it's automatic system, so that's the reason sometimes we saw on the starting grid cars that are like a stop but then restart the race. It, it, it's uh, very, very important, it's the anti-stop system. So again, we engage the clutch, yep. we start to let it down until we find the bite point, lights go out, full throttle, release. Yes. And all of that within a tenth of a second. A tenth of a second. The reaction point of the driver, the reaction moment of the driver is very important on this, but also it's very important this first bite point finder. It changes a lot, depending on the temperature of the discs that arrives to a very high temperature over the 100 degrees, depending on the grid of the tarm of the grip on the tarmac depending on the tire the temperature of the tarmac uh, and the tire the driver has to change and adjust this biting point because it's very important to have a very good start and obviously we see the clutches in different places on different wheels we see lewis hamilton with his hand over the top of yep. the wheel holding his clutch at the top yeah to you're point. right good point because the regulations states and defines what you can do with the clutch. You cannot have any point, for example, to uh, help the drivers to have that bite point. You cannot have uh, something like a dot or something like that, okay. or a stopper that no helps stopper. you. Yeah. No, you can have two levers, you have two levers, but they cannot work together, so you have to use only one. Okay. And it's regulated, the regulations of the FIA, to avoid any electronic system to help the drivers to have a perfect start. So it relies on the human factor, that is always not 100% perfect. So that is the race start, and that is when we are manually engaging the clutch. How yes. about in the race? Because they're not engaging the clutch and shifting up or engaging the clutch to shift exactly. down. How are we changing gears up and down with this clutch in the race? The Formula One gearboxes have a system that is called seamless, so they don't need the drivers to press the clutch, uh, mainly on the upshift. But on the downshift, some teams are using the clutch to help that movement and to protect the gearbox. It doesn't lose time, it doesn't lose a, a, a lot of time during a lap, but it helps 
to keep after the reliability of the whole thing. So during the race, not only on the pit stop, because on the pit stop you need to stop the car and release again, it's like a restart. On, during the race, the clutch is working. It's not completely stopped. It's not completely engaged and it's just moving all the power that is coming from the engine. When there is gearbox uh, changes and downshift mainly, they are still doing a little help to protect that. So in the pit stop, how are the drivers finding the bite point when the wheels are off the ground? How do you find that? You don't do it. On a pit stop, as you see, the drivers are starting and sliding the rear part of it. it, it sometimes it even is good because they help to turn the car and to put it on the fast line. So they don't do the bite point and no, no, then it's they flat just out. Floor just it and go. Leave it and go. Starting splitting it. That is no good for the driver. But it, it helps to, hold, to warm the, the tires when it's uh, leaving the, the pit stop area and also it's helping to turn. So it makes it uh, more uh, efficient than on the start that there, one centimeter or one tenth of a second being quicker with the clutch, it can make one position at the end of the straight. Yeah, of course. Huge and it's difference. very important on the, on the current Formula One. Fascinating stuff, mate. Yeah. Fascinating. Thanks to Alpine because they deliver a lot of pieces as this steering wheel, just to help uh, us to understand beautiful, how... Beautiful, beautiful. Nice so piece, the technology that we have on the road cars, it's kind of similar to what we have in Formula One, just much more refined, much smaller and cheaper. Because every, as everything in Formula One <laughs> is expensive, but I tell you what, it must be expensive. It's not, it's not Formula One. If it's not expensive, it's not Formula no, One. No, and it is so key. Yes. Brilliant. Albert, thank you so much, mate, for all of your insights this year. My it's pleasure. Been absolutely fascinating. My I've pleasure. learned a lot. I have to say, Me I, too. I particularly enjoyed you in the uh, mini purple sauna in Austin. <laughs> I think that was probably my favorite one of the year. That what was, was your a favorite good one. one of the year. That was a good one. You know why? Because I haven't seen anything similar to that. So uh, yeah. it was a creation from the zero. Was that your favorite? Uh, you mean last year or this year, Austin? This year. No, you enjoy more I than like me there. I like a there. bucket of water You know that the, the, the Formula One in the future will have more air inside, as so, we say? So, all thanks to your uh, demonstration, Not I would that. imagine, in the, in the purple mini sauna. But we talk about the water spray in Australia, yeah. as well with the wheel cover. Yeah. We have done, we overtake in with the IE uh, intelligence, artificial intelligence for the track limits, you remember? Do you in think Spa? the FIA are watching your tech demonstrations on F1 TV and are therefore making decisions for the future based on that? I, I, I don't think so, but this, They're not paying I, this, this it, kind of, of brainstorms that I'm doing, that I'm pretty much sure the FIA are also doing brainstorms. They have more technology, a little bit more of budget than me, but... Uh, there you As go. Always. You want to know what the future regulation changes will be in Formula One. Make sure you tune in to the tech demonstrations throughout 2024 as well. Albert, a pleasure, my friend. Thank my you friend. so much. Thank you so I've much, Will. So much, my Thank friend. You. I've learned so much. Thank you, buddy.